Welcome to Electron Line. What we observe in the night sky does depend upon the orbit of the Earth and the changing shape of that orbit. We know that the Earth's orbit is typically an ellipse, and I say typically because sometimes it's almost nearly a circle, and other times it, it's very elliptical if you want to say it that way. What that means is that the eccentricity of the orbit changes quite a bit, especially due to the attractive forces, the gravitational attractive forces of Jupiter and Saturn having an effect on the Earth, thus cause the shape of the Earth's orbit to change. The eccentricity here is indicated that sometimes can be as low as 0 0.0000, that's four zeros, five five, which is, means it's almost perfectly circular, and at other times the eccentricity is quite high at 0 0.0679, that makes it very elliptical. In other words, the distance from the Earth to the Sun at aphelion will be much larger than the distance from the Earth to the Sun at perihelion. Remember that the total distance from the opposite ends of the orbit in the ellipse is called the major axis and half of that is called the semi-major axis. On average that distance is 93 million miles, about 150 million kilometers, and those are approximate numbers, not exactly. And so what happens is when the eccentricity is very low, the, the, sh the shape of the Earth is such that at perihelion the uh, the Earth is only 5 million miles closer to the Sun than the average, and 5 million miles, oh, I shouldn't say 5 million, 5,000, let me correct myself, 5,000 miles closer to the Sun and 5,000 miles farther away from the Sun than the average. So that's almost nearly, nearly circular. Today, our eccentricity is at 0 0.017. That means that when we're closer to the Sun, we're about 1.5 billion miles closer, and when we're farther from the Sun, we're about 1.5 million miles farther than the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. But there are times when the orbit changes to such an extent that the distance will be enormously larger or smaller, depending upon what part of the, the orbit we're at. So it can be as much as, let's see here, that's more than 6 million miles closer or more than 6 million miles farther away from the Sun than the average distance. That will have a tremendous effect on the climate of the Earth. Notice that it's 14.5% closer, meaning we will be receiving 31% more energy when we're closer to the Sun and 31% less energy when we're much farther away from the Sun. So that is quite a change that, has a, that will have a tremendous effect. And then on top of that, whether or not it's summer or winter during that time also has a tremendous effect on the Earth's climate. But now, let's take a closer look mathematically what we really mean by eccentricity. Well, it is a number in such a way that we can calculate the distance from the Earth to the Sun at perihelion and at aphelion by using this equation. A is representative of the semi-major axis, about 93 million miles, so when you put 93 million, 93 million in there, and then you have 1 minus E, the eccentricity, and that will give you the distance at perihelion, and then you go 1 plus eccentricity times the semi-major axis, and you'll get the distance at aphelion. Now, what are the Milankovitch cycles? Well, again, it's the cyclical process or the cyclical nature of the change of the orbit of the Earth becoming nearly circular to elliptical to a large extent. And that cycle goes in about 100,000 year cycles. So 100,000 years typically to go from one extreme to the other and back. Now, what does that mean? 100,000 year cycle? Well, there's some other cycles involved in that as well, but on average, the major changes to the orbit will be in about 100,000 year cycles. Now, what's very interesting is that the ice ages, according to the geological record, also have been occurring at about 100,000 year cycles, and there's, of course, therefore, a large suspicion that there's a very strong correlation between the Milankovitch cycles of the Earth's orbit around the Sun and the ice ages. Very strong circumstantial evidence. Now there's some other evidence there that really seem to point to it, but at least there is a very strong correlation. So as we can see that the Earth's orbit changes in 100,000 year cycles, and then we see that the ice ages have been occurring in kind of like, like these kind of cycles where there was almost 90,000 years of very cold weather and about 10,000 years of very warm weather, and there, the warm weather periods are about 100,000 years apart. We believe that has a strong correlation with the Earth cycles the way the elliptical orbit changes over time. And that is known as Milankovitch cycles, which is named after a very famous Russian scientist and engineer who figured this out and who published that work. Very, very uh, amazing to see how much the Earth's orbit can actually change.